Fancy photo brushes can be created in all kinds of ways, but the spiral is a great source for brush designs. I've got this design here. I can use that as a brush very easily. But also what I can do is I can manipulate this design to create even more brushes. So let's just remove this. And I'm gonna use bitmap patterns in this as well to create even more designs. So where's the spiral tool? Fancy Photo, here's the spiral tool over in the tools panel. So you can see it there. If you can't find it there, you'll probably find it here. Just go here, probably just down the bottom here, next door to the QR code. And simply apply. And you'll see there, you get this. Now, obviously yours probably will be different depending on the settings you've got up here. And also you can modify the stroke. So you can go here and you can say color. Let's just go for red, say. But I'm gonna change that later. You can also go for gradients. Do all kinds of different things. But you can also click here and change a different linear, decaying. But I always go with this one, counter semicircular. And also you modify the number of turns. So you just increase that a bit, maybe go like that. So once you've got that, what I want is to have something like broken up, lots and lots of separate parts. Well, you could use dashes. Simply just come up here, click here, and there's dash styles. Just click there and you can then see, you can create some interesting designs that way. But you can also create some interesting designs using patterns, bitmap patterns. And here is one of those designs. This is what I'm gonna use for my bitmap pattern, just a basic design you can create all kinds of designs then go to file and export and just simply export it make certain use the selection area so you just got that so let's just go back to the spiral there's a the spiral well how do i get that design in here well i can go up here to the stroke and I can click here i can go to swatches I can go for maybe that sort of design, which is quite nice, colorful design, click there, all those sort of designs. But also I can go to the gradient tool. Now the context at the top will default, unfortunately, to fill. Should default, I think, with a stroke, to stroke, but it doesn't do that. So you need to go to stroke to set the context. And now you will see, you get this. This is the gradient I've used. And I can go here to linear, See so none, solid, linear, and you can also select bitmap. So select that, and then select a file. Now I'm gonna select this one, 1.png. It's just a very basic circular design with a gradient. And now you can see you've got that. Go to the gradient tool. Again, make certain you select again the stroke. If you don't, you can not manipulate the right thing. And you can then resize that and you can see then you get a design like this so it's made up of a lot more like pulses around that circular design or spiral design and the great thing about this is now it does create some unique brushes but also what you can do is you can always go to layers and you can go to effects just down here click effects and you can go for maybe bevan boss or maybe go for 3d just click one of those Select there and you can change radius and then you get this lovely depth to your design. And you could also click out shadow, maybe out, out shadow, but I always find that that adds a bit of darkness to it, but that's what you want. It's a real great way of doing it, but I'm gonna turn that off. So I just want the 3D aspect and then click close. Now what you can also do is you can now also maybe select a different one. You can always go over here and decide, you know what, I didn't want that one. So click there, you can change the swatches again, but you can also select the bitmap again, just that, that one up here, the type, select that. And as soon as you do that, it will prompt and it will select the file that I've got there, a 3D one. So click open. Now you might not like the result. You can change it and resize it, something like that. But you can also click here, again go for swatches or just go bitmap again and go with this one, which is a different one. You might prefer that one. And of course, you could literally have millions of designs. It could be any image. It could be images of text. It could be shapes. It could be anything in that file. And you can resize that and you move that around. And I'm going to go with something like that. But it's got lots of nice little gaps. It's not a solid design. And that's what I want. Well, once I've done that, I can also manipulate the spiral. Don't have to go with just what we've got here. But to do that, you need to go up here. As long as it's selected, Go to the spiral here, 
and convert to curves. Just click that. And now you'll see you've got these dots. And also you notice over here, the no tool there. So no tool selected, you can select all of them. And you can go along here. And you see you've got some actions. I think the actions are really good. I'd love to see a lot more actions than this, but they've got a few actions that are really decent. And this one's a nice one, split curve after selected node. So simply click it and that will add another batch of nodes in between the other nodes. So if you've got 15 nodes or 16 nodes, you'll suddenly get, see now, 16. Or maybe more, <laughs> whatever. But you'll certainly get a few more nodes. The mathematics, it suddenly, but still, just click here a few times, and I always like to select them all again. So you can see then you get that. Well, once you've got that, what you can then do is you could select some of the inner ones, Looks a bit messy when you do that, I think. And unfortunately, there's no feature to select like this. You can select that, particularly make it easy. So you, you can do it all manually, but it's it's fiddly. It's, it's okay when you're going straight down, but actually, unless you rotate it and then go down again, because it's very hard to do it that direction because you end up selecting, unfortunately, other items. But you could rotate it and then go straight down and you could do it that way but it doesn't look great anyway. You can also see you've still got this 3D effect as well, which is quite nice. But what you can do at any point, you can select any of these and you can just drag them different distances. I always like to just uh, distort this. And this is one thing that I think that's really missing in designer as well as photo. I would love to see some more effects options. Things like an illustrator where you've got the various punk, puck or whatever it is, and you've got various other ones as well wave ones you can just all zigzag so you can see you can create a different selection of designs there and then fortunately here you just don't have them you just got to manually do it which is fine but it would be nice to be able to just sort of not have to do this manually as well as other of course other plugins there's no plugins for vector features like this and i created lots for illustrator but unfortunately in here, I can't do that. And I would love to have ones where it manipulates them and moves them around in different ways. Hopefully at some point we'll get that in the script and even. Right, well, you've got this design. And what you can then do is of course you can use this. You can manipulate it further if you want. You can also rasterize it now. So rasterize it, simply just go over here to layer and down here. Now, if you want to keep it, obviously you may want to decide to change it again later. A good idea would be to duplicate this. So simply duplicate it, right click and duplicate, and then hide it. But you might not want that. So let's just remove the swatches there, I don't need that. But you could duplicate it, and then of course you've rasterized it, you still can go back. If you rasterize, you can't go back. So go to layer and down to rasterize. Click there, because I want the whole 3D effect everything all included in the pixel image and rasterize. So you've got this design and you can manipulate it further now. It's a pixel layer. So you can go up to filters, you can apply twirl to it, you can apply deform, all those kind of things, liquefy, whole load of different things. But I'm just gonna go with this. And now go to brushes, here's the brushes, and you find that in the window menu, brushes there. Go to the right side here, and now I'm just gonna put it in this category, but you could create a category. You can see there, create a category, but I'm just gonna go down here, new brush from selection. That's what I've got selected. So new brush from selection, and there it is. Now if I thin, just let's just delete it now. I don't need it anymore, but I'm just gonna double click. And you can see now you've got this design. And you can manipulate this even more. You can change here the spacing, and you can see now, instead of your usual, and I quite often, I've created quite a few in previous videos on this, but now you can see you create some interesting structures within the design as well, which can be used. So let's just go here and you can change the size, reduce it down, I don't want it that big. And you can go over here to dynamics, size jitter. So you can change that, go for cyclic. You can create a lovely rippled sort of, I think that just creates a really great sort of zigzaggy sort of design there. Very quick and easy. Press B and then apply. Now I'd love to see a feature for a sketch pad or a 
the sort of one where you can just apply it, not just on the document. You can obviously see a preview, but it's not the same where you can sort of just sketch it out and think, you know what, that's the best brush ever. That's not available, unfortunately. It's in Painter. You can do that in Painter. But unfortunately, Infinity, they haven't added. And I think that's one of the best, really useful features, sort of a test scratch pad or whatever you want to call it, just to try out the brush. Now, another thing that I really dislike is that wet edges. We prefer to turn that off. And you've got an option here, don't set wet edges. And I would personally just put it to set wet edges off. Never want wet edges. The reason you can see, I think this brush just looks so much nicer when it's like that. Of course, people will turn around and say, you know, I prefer the opposite. But you can see now you can create this sort of design. And we can then also do is got dynamics again, you go there, you can go for rotation ditter. And you can get, obviously, this now is going to be a complete randomized, scratchy sort of mess of a brush, which I think is still quite nice. But you can also go again with that. You can go to cycling. And you can then get this like, twisty, turny brush. And again, you can manipulate that. So just click here, go to standard profile. And you can see as you change that, run through those profiles. And you can obviously tweak it in all as you push it like that, see what happens. It becomes again fairly clear, sort of smooth, and then suddenly gets very randomized. But you can reduce that down to a, just a very sort of twirling brush. You can see create a design like that and because of that lovely structure within the thing it also creates some interesting designs as well and as well as the edge of course that lovely sort of zigzag effect or wave effect on the edge you got that but also you can use this option hue jitter and you can push that and again you get all these different colors running through and then you go here and you can say you know what i want cycling so then you get this lovely rainbow effect you've got crunching in different colors crunching and twisting and you can then apply that and again because of all that lovely structure you've added to your brush and it you could add a lot more structure than just that maybe loops in it whole range and i just went for a very basic wave design but you could sort of make whole heaps of different designs than just this basic design but you can see the sort of designs you can create very quickly and let's just remove that i don't need that brush there you can see it's just stored away as an image brush there. So just close that and you can still apply it, continue to apply it and get something like that. And now of course, what you can also do is you can always go up here to move there. With that, you can resize this, but also you can go to layer, new pattern layer from section and you've got design like that. Go to mirror and you've got design like that. Now you can see I've got a gap there. So again, press B, you've got your brush over there, peers over there, and you can then apply there. And you can see then as you go in, and of course, let's just quickly just change that I've got the size maybe a bit too small. Trouble is, when you go to some of these ones, it really sort of goes up very rapidly from about 200 to about 900, which is never easy to manipulate. Sometimes it's just easier just to type it in. Sometimes I'm too lazy, and I just sort of think, oh, I'll just do the slider, but it isn't always the best because. You know, you just end up flies off in the wrong direction again. And you can see then you get this lovely swirl like that. I say it's just a pity that I can't change the spacing to make it 0.1. I'd love to see that feature in the brushes. As well as, of course, which I've mentioned many times, spacing. That the spacing option should be tweaked and a jitter feature for that as well. But you can see now you've got this lovely design, which you can then manipulate even further like that to create sort of a lovely pattern design and then once you've got that of course you can always go to layer and you can then rasterize it and then manipulate it further so filters and you can go to distort and deform or maybe go for mirror and then apply mirror effects to that and you can then manipulate that design to create all kinds of weird and wonderful sort of pattern designs from this brush stroke and this brush stroke as mentioned is just made up of, let's just press B again, made up of that wave design. And the wave design doesn't have this edge. You can change it. You can manipulate that. And again, one of the things that's always quite good is let's just remove this. Let's remove that. With that, you can always ply the brush. Again, press B there. You can create something like that. 
maybe apply a little bit like that. Just create a very rapid brush design like that. You can create something fairly unique. You can also, of course, go to filters, distort and deform. You can still keep this obviously active. Go here, press the move tool and make certain that filters deform. I always find the brushes, the brush tool, if you've got some of these tools selected and you try and use deform, it often fails. Just you can't, for some weird reason, select the actual pins. Don't know why, but that seems to be the way that it's been designed. So you can see then you can create tr really, truly unique designs like that, squeeze it in all that kind of way and click apply. And this design, of course, hold down the ultra option key, you can duplicate. You can then create something like that, maybe a multiple copy, or use, of course, the press return. If you've got move tool selected, press return, and you've got move and duplicate, and you can create, obviously, some combinations where you twirl it, rotate it, make spiral designs from that. So you've got this, and then you can select all of those, make them all selected, layer, and then merge, merge selected. So they merge into one, and then, again, this can be then used as a new brush. So you could very quickly just go over here, B, and you've got this brush, close that, don't want that anymore, window, and go down to brushes, make certain you then just go over here and create a new one. So new brush from selection, and you've got that. And you can see now you've got this brush, and you of course can apply it like that, and you can create all kinds of unique dabs, simply just apply it once. Don't have to sort of apply a brush stroke constant so you can fill it very rapidly with this design just by just clicking like that fill the screen and again with that selected filters repeat deform and you can see then you can create even more unique designs maybe not the best of deforms but you can see you can just try it out i like to just reapply it so you can see create that and then still just double click and again you can tweak these simply just change the spacing and you can see then you've got this really weird strike within the thing. It's like a, I don't know, a stick of rock where you've got this sort of slice through. But again, you can tweak the rotations. You can get something like that. Or again, make certain don't set wet edges. Least favorite feature, dynamics and size jitter. And also hue jitter. You can then make it colorful. Again, cyclic, click and click there. Go for different profiles. You can see you can create some really beautiful sort of, and again, press B to get the brush back again. Press B, just without locking it, obviously. And you can see then you create something like that, which is a very weird and wonderful brush stroke. Lovely, smooth, flowing design, very rapidly. And of course, you've got that central design, which you can then, of course, manipulate, cycle it, change the colors, but also rotation jitter. Go there, and you can see then go random, cyclic, click, and you've got that. Click profiles, again, maybe go for the bottom one, and you can see you can create a brush like that, which you can then apply and create twirls, which of course, if you close, let's just quickly close it, you've got the brush there. You can always go to symmetry, turn symmetry on. Let's just put symmetry, go to four. I always like this to go to four. You can go to 16. But I think sometimes it just pushes it too far and then you lock it. And also you've got blend modes. Try, just different ones. Just try different ones there. Maybe lighten, it's always good. And you can see then, apply your design. And as you do that, you can see it just creates all kinds of truly weird. Actually looks better when it's just doing it. I would love to see a feature, time a sort of time-lapse feature where you could sort of, or capture, video capture, best word to describe it. So you could actually catch it as it does it. Because I think sometimes when you create a design, you think, oh, that looks brilliant. And then, of course, it's gone. But it would be nice if you could save it. And you can always change the width, reduce it down, maybe go for something smaller. And you can see then you've got a design like that. And again, just apply different ways, apply and twirl, or just use dabs if you want to create other designs as well. Something like that. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Any thoughts about this? How you're using the brushes? Please let me know. I really would love to know. Are these brush effects of any interest? I think that the brushes in Affinity Photo can be expanded in countless ways. There are still things I would love to see. 
articles, things I think, you know, why, why don't they put this in? Why don't they have that? Why isn't there sort of features for symmetry? I would love to have different zones of symmetry. I think you could do maybe different sort of symmetry effects. That would be superb. Unfortunately, all you've got is just this basic symmetry. I'd love to see spiral symmetries, all the sort of things you can see in Photoshop. I can't see why Infinity Photo couldn't add some more sort of unusual sort of symmetry designs. And I just love symmetry effects. You probably can tell from the fact that I do a few videos on that subject. Bye.